Well, hello again, YouTube. Thanks again for watching and tuning in. The um, carrying on with our gearbox episodes of uh, making an adapter plate. Um, this is proving a bit more challenging <laughs> than I first thought. Um, considering how relatively cheaply you can buy these plates, I'm surprised how much work goes into them. <laughs> oh, but here we go. Uh, in this episode, we actually get the gearbox bolted up to the engine. Uh, we yet to work out what's going to happen with the clutch. And I've also come up with a brainwave about the gear stick and possibly how we can move that forward. But that's that'll be a future episode yet. So keep watching, see how we're getting on and I hope you enjoy. Been fiddling about with starter motor location and seem to be on to a winner here. So I, I was just potch, started off intentionally just potching about with this. I didn't get the camera out, then got carried away. And so this is where we're at. Um, so... Drill that hole out and use that as a pivot point and had that, that hole slotted. I just kept moving the starter motor in until it was useful. Okay, so you can see I've got a battery set up and the original, this is the pretty much the same setup as I had before when I was messing around with the engine. <coughs> and this is what we've got now. So if I touch that onto there. So that's engaging and disengaging very nicely at that. So I'm going to weld those nuts onto there now. And that's going to be our starter motor position. May have to relieve the inside of the bell housing on the gearbox uh, yet, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So that's those welded in place under there so same again we'll just drill those through and they're ready and we'll include a bit of extra up around here to allow on our actual plate that we make right oh we've now got a bit of six mil steel that uh, i'm going to use to make my um, adapter plate from so first thing to do clamp down our template drill through the holes and then we'll see about cutting it out right, and to help prevent things shuffling around drop a bolt in each one as we do them Okay, that leaves us now with a bit of steel with a pile of holes drilled into it. Right, the first hole to cut out is going to be the easiest hole because we've got more material to, you know, the smaller we make this, the more difficult it is to work with. So we'll cut the centre hole out first. So I've got the original paper template now. So I've lined up my uh, centre line from there to there. And now from that, I can work out the centre of my piece. So my Chuck that back in there basically to, to get me my circle there and then I can measure either from half that distance there to work out my centre or half the distance between the circle there. So I'll uh, work out the middle of that now, punch and drill a hole in that and then we'll work out and make a jig to uh, cut the circle with the plasma cutter. From my centre I've drilled a 6 mil hole out of that. So all we need to make a simple jig is something a straight line. So pib nibbed the center punch in there, use my dividers to work out where we need to go, which is our circle diameter there. I drill an eight mil hole in this side because the end of my plasma torch is eight mil and that will slot into there, bolt that onto there. 
And hey presto, we have a divider for the plasma cutter. Uh, right, next thing, a couple of penny washers that act like a bearing. And they give a little bit of a gap. Not to hold it. So if you don't want this tight, you just want it not to flop about. And there we have a guide for the plasma cutter. So that'll fit in there like so. And around we go. So the next thing I need to do now is drill a small pilot into there for the plasma to start with because you don't want to burn through the metal with the plasma because it just ruins the tips. Okay, so it's a starting hole. It's a three mil drill bit. Gently, gently so you don't snap the bit. And that'll be our starting point now for the the plasma cutter. All right, you then. That's our hole cut out. Obviously, we'll clean this up the flap disc to smarten it up a little bit. Next thing I want to do is cut out uh, the bits here for the um, crank sensor and start the motor. So, the next thing you want to do is get this bolted back in place and then we can use this to guide our plasma around. Now we're going to be <coughs> off the side of this a little bit but that doesn't matter if because it just be a little bit bigger but that's fine but the, the central central hole I needed to be more accurate. Right let's uh, bolt that down And slowly but surely, bring our plasma cutter around here, uh, around this end here. I'm going to uh, extend that a little bit to allow a bit more meat around the starter motor. Right, a quick line up, make sure it all bang on, and there are all the bolt holes are absolutely smack on where they need to be. So, the little template thing has worked a treat. Been round all the edges with a fat wheel and just cleaned, cleaned it up so it looks a bit neater. So, the next challenge now is to put the bevels in for these. So, these need to be beveled that way, and these need to be beveled. On the other side. Now I, my plan for doing this, I looked at pricing up a proper tool for doing this, they're surprisingly expensive but as this 22 mil, I think it is, yeah 22 mil job a bit was like a fiver. Now that's not going to give me the bev bevel I need because the bevel on there is 90 degrees or 45 and 45 and that's like 30 degrees something so I'm going to regrind that bit to 90 degrees and then see if that'll do the job for me. And here's my contraption for doing that. Simply use the bolt as a T-piece. The grinder set up at a 45 degree angle to the machine and 
shall grind away. Okay, I see an issue with this. The grinder does need to be canted over slightly at an angle to get the cutting face. So what I think I'll do is slip through there, bend it over and tack it back up again. Right, there we go. That should do us. So we've got a little bit of an angle for our cutting relief. We're at 45 degrees on there. So let's spin it and see what happens. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. But it has ended up with a bit of a bevel on it because of the shape of the, the grinding stone. So what I'm going to do is finish it off on the on here because I've got a nice flat front on that and see how we get on. Right, that's flattened it out nicely. So let's have a go with uh, one of the holes to see how it does. What's the worst that can happen? That's working. Yes, yeah, very nice. Okay, let's keep going with that. It's uh, losing its edge quite rapidly. Might have to resharpen it, but it's definitely working as a, a bevel. Right, I can put another and sharpen the edge a little bit on it again and then try again. I've cut a better relief on it now as well, ground a proper relief on it, so it should cut better now. Let's try that again. Uh, there we go, that's nice and flush now. Super! doing the job so I will call it successful. Okay so I've gone ahead and drilled out, chamfered out some of the others. That one I shouldn't have. It's on the locator there so I'm not gonna sure what I'm gonna do about that. That is gonna get in the way I have to take that locating spigot off which is annoying. Um but what I'm gonna do now I've got these chamfered on the on the back side of that too and these are um similar so, uh, the screws, the beveled screws on them. So now we've got offering up the gearbox and see what we got. The good news is these gearbox don't weigh very much. They're pretty light, so that's good. Right, first thing I do is pop this on, in fact. So that's good news, that spins freely. You're not catching on anything. I will loosely put a couple of bolts in there just to hold that in place for now. Lovely. Right, let's see if the box lines up. I've yet to work out what's going to happen with the clutch and the spigot bearing and all that. I'm waiting for stuff to come in the post for me to try. I've got a MX-5 clutch plate, but it's too small. The, uh, the, the, you know, it's, it's way too small. It's hardly any bit actually touching the, 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 that section of the flywheel, which is important. So I've got a Mondeo clutch on route to me, and we'll find out whether the splines will line up. If the splines line up, we're laughing. If they don't, we'll have to figure something else out. We'll have to find a clutch plate that will suit us. three hands. Okay, 
think what I think I might end up doing is welding these screws on the other side of the plate so they can't pop around. There you go. I was hoping that bolt would line up, but it's just, just out. But it's so close, I might get away with drilling that through, just to open up the hole there. And we'll cross that bridge and get to it. That one's way up on that side, so that's definitely not going to happen. But that's it. In a in effect, connect it up. So obviously we've only just got two, two bolts in at the moment, but that, <laughs> that's fine. Um, I think the next thing I may need to do is actually fit our sump to the engine to work out where we can and can't bolt down here. So we got. The starter motor also needs some work. This is going to need relieving to allow the starter motor to fit into it. That's going to be easy enough for the die grinder. And that's the bolt there, which almost lines up. So I'm tempted to drill that through from the other side to make that one line up. But we're looking good. The engine is now attached to the gearbox or gearbox is now attached to the engine so we're making good progress and the other thing I'm looking at with this gearbox is that gear stick ideally could do it going forward about six inches and looks like that might be possible with this arrangement here because it's all on a, a remote job with a, a bar that goes through there which is the selector so I'm wondering if I can lock that off there move this whole thing up to that bolt section and just shorten everything to suit. If we can, that's going to make the gear stick stick out the gear stick hole, which would be very good because if it's too far back, it's going to catch up on the handbrake. And now we're looking at moving the, moving the handbrake back, then look at moving the seat in back, and it all starts to grow arms and legs. So if, if we can do that, that'd be fantastic. Right, well, I think that's enough fun for one episode. We've got the gearbox bolted to the engine now, so that's a good start and the next one will hopefully the clutch will have appeared by then so we can work out what we're going to do with the clutch and locate the starter motor and, and clean out the box clearance the box for that and and take it from there and see how we get on it's a, it's a fairly long process but you know hey -ho, it's going there getting in the right direction anyway so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed i hope that was useful to you